everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Welcome again to our new topic in mathematics grade 10. We will talk about measures of position, specifically the quartile in ungrouped data. This is commonly uh, discussed during the fourth quarter. So our objectives for this video lesson is to recall the measures of central tendency in ungrouped data because it is related with the measures of position specifically for the quartiles in ungrouped data. And we're going to solve for it and then interpret what does it mean. So syempre, hindi lang tayo basta-basta nagsosolve, dapat alam din natin kung anong ibig sabihin ng ating sinosolve. So let's start. Once we say measures of position, it is a method by which the position that data value has within a given data set can be identified. By the term itself, position, it talks about for a certain set of data, ano, nasaan ang exact position mo? Na kabilang ka ba na doon sa percentage who is good performers or not. So that is the meaning of measures of position. And always remember that the values or the data set that you've gathered should always be arranged from lowest up to the highest. Okay? So halimbawa, yang from those five people on that picture, and then I've encircled the second uh, person, which is a girl, so, kung naka-arrange yan from lowest to highest, anong ang kanyang performance? Base doon sa uh, score niya in a class. Okay? So, to give you further uh, details, we will talk about first quartiles. That is the first type of measure of position. So, meron pa tayong dalawang pag-uusapan pa on the next videos to come. So, the first one, ano bang quartiles? These are the measures that divide an arranged data set into four equal parts. Ang keyword dito, or the keywords are four equal parts. So, given a data set, na arrange na siya from lowest to highest, i- Di divide natin yung data set na yon into four equal parts. And that's what we're going to do uh, later on on the next slides. So, para mas lalo tayong malinawan, let's say that that is a strip of paper which represents 100%. Then, if we're going to divide it into four equal parts, the 100% will become 25% on each part. So, equally divided siya. At katulad ng nabanggit ko kanina, Ang boundaries natin is the lowest score and the highest score. So, base saan sa lowest score and the highest score, magkakaroon tayo ng tatlong quartiles. The first quartile, the second quartile, and the third quartile. Ma'am, bakit walang fourth quartile? Kasi that represents already the 100%. Okay? And it's not true at all times. So, boundary lang natin yung lowest score at saka yung highest score. But some of the books, they are still computing Q sub 4. But for this video lesson, I'm going to emphasize that there is no such thing as Q sub 4. So, we will talk about only Q sub 1, Q sub 2, and Q sub 3. Okay? So, yun yung mga in-betweens ng bawat uh, equal partitions. Okay? So, yung Q sub 1... Ang ibang tawag sa kanya ay lower quartile. The Q sub 2 is the median. As you can notice, siya yung pinaka nasa gitna. And then Q sub 3 is also noted as upper quartile. So, yan yung ibang tawag sa mga quartiles natin. Okay? So, kindly take note of that. And then, I would also like to emphasize na yung Q sub 2, yan yung laging unang kinukuha. Okay? Kasi yan yung pinaka nasa gitna. O, di ba pagka nag-fold tayo ng paper, unang kalahati iyon. So, yan yung lagi nating unang sinosold. And then, this is now known as our lower half. And then, the other side, this is now our upper half. Para mas madali tayo sa interpretation. And then, I would like also to emphasize, 
si Q sub 1, ang pinag-uusapan lang natin, mula lowest score hanggang the Q sub 1, yung computed natin saan, which is now 25%. Then, pagka Q sub 2 naman, so andito na tayo, starting from the lowest score up to Q sub 2, now that pertains to 50%. So, kalahati na ang ating pinag-uusapan once we say Q sub 2, kaya nga median. And then, Q sub 3, coming from the lowest score again, up to the computed Q sub 3, we are now pertaining to the 75% of the data set. Okay, so ganyan mag-interpret ng quartiles. So I hope that is clear. Now, the formula is Q sub K is equal to K over 4 times the quantity N plus 1. Now, the Q sub K here represents the quartile. So yan yung symbol for the quartile. Now, what is K and N? K means the nth partition. Pang ilang quartile ang ating pinag-uusapan. Eh, di ba meron tayong Q sub 1, Q sub 2, and Q sub 3. Na yung 1, 2, and 3 na yan, those are the values of K. So, nakadepende yan. And then, the value of N is the total number of observations o ilan lahat yung data set na meron tayo. So, to make it clear, let's have an example. The owner of a milk tea shop recorded the number of orders each hour in a day. The results were 14, 10, 12, 9, 17, 5, 8, 9, 14, 10, and 11. And we're going to identify the three quartiles, Q sub 1, Q sub 2, and Q sub 3. So like what I've told to you a while ago, always remember that we need to arrange the data set from lowest up to the highest. So, kung i-arrange natin yung mga number of orders, yun yung pinaka-main idea natin sa problem natin, we will have this kind of arrangement. So, 5, 8, 9, 9, 10, 10, 11, 12, 14, 14, and 17. At katulad nga po ng nabanggit ko kanina, we need from in solving Q sub 1, Q sub 2, and Q sub 3, ang laging nauuna natin isosolve ay si Q sub 2. Okay? sa madaling proseso natin siya gawin. So, ang ibang tawag sa kanya ay median. So, if I'm going to ask you, and I've already discussed that in the previous lessons, what do you think is the median on this data set? Ano yung number na nasa pinaka gitna? Okay, maraming salamat po. The answer there is 10. Very good. So, our second quartile in ungrouped data here is 10. So, madali lang siya. So, ma'am, paano gagamitin yung formula? So, let us verify Q sub 2 is equal to 10 using this formula. And itong formula na to, it only gives the position. Kaya nga, tinawag itong measures of position. Paano yun, ma'am? O, Q sub 2 ang ating pinag-uusapan. So, ibig sabihin, Ang value ng k natin ay 2. At ang value ng n natin ay kung ilan lahat po ito. Okay? So, the value of n here is 11. Count mo lang. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. So, we're just going to substitute that. We will have 2 over 4 times the quantity 11 plus 1. And then, simplify mo lang, katulad ng mga ginagawa natin before. So, the lowest term of 2 over 4 is 1 half, and 11 plus 1 is 12. So, in short, ano ang kalahati ng 12? The answer there is 6. Bakit ganun, ma'am? Ang nakuha nating sagot ay 6. Ta pero, ang sinasabi natin kanina, the value of Q sub 2 is equal to 10. Because 6 here pertains to the exact position. Pang-anim na number ang ating pinag-uusapan. So, let's go back to our data set. Our first is 5, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. So as you can notice, our Q sub 2 is really 10. Okay, so I hope that is very clear with everyone. Let's now proceed on the next item. So given again that arranged data and alam na natin kung ano ang median o yung Q sub 2, we could now find Q sub 1. At balikan ulit natin, ang ibang tawag sa kanya ay lower quartile. At ang hint na mabibigay ko, 
look for the median on the lower half. So ito, baseline na natin tong si Q sub 2. Hindi na yan kasama sa usapan. So ito na lang ang lower half natin. Okay? So from that, ano ang median? Ano ang pinaka nasa gitna? That is 9. Okay, so the value of Q sub 1 is equal to 9. Now, using the formula, the value of K is 1 and the value of N is still 11. So, 11 plus 1 is 4. Ano ang 1 fourth ng 12 or 12 divided by 4? The answer here is 3. Again, that means position, pangatlong number. So, kung bibilangin natin, this is the first, second, and then the third. So, tama nga na ang Q sub 1 natin ay 9. Okay po. So, I hope you are learning. So, that one is our Q sub 1. Then, the last one, ang dapat nating hanapin is si Q sub 3. So, having the same steps, Q sub 3 is the upper quartile. So, doon naman tayo titingin sa upper half. So, from 11 going to 17. That is our upper half. Ano ngayon yung pinaka na sa gitna? Yung median. Tama po. Ang sagot po ay 14. Paano po ulit yon doon sa formula? The value of K now is 3. Kasi Q sub 3. And then the value of N is 11. So 11 plus 1 is 4. So simplifying this, we could cancel 12 and 4. Kasi ito yung magkakaroon ng over 1. Tama? Divisible kasi si 12 at saka si 4 which will become 3. And then 3 times 3, the answer there is 9. So, pang sham na number. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then the ninth. So, ibig sabihin, tama nga na ang 14th natin ay ang Q sub 3 or the third quartile. Okay? I hope everything is clear and for sure you can do it. Madali lang siya. So, kailan ba yan ginagamit? Ang ungroup data ay ginagamit yan uh, pagka less than 30 yung ating data set. Kasi madali mo siyang ma-arrange, madali mo siyang makita kung ano yung mga positions na yan. So, dyan din ginagamit yung quartile. Pagka uh, less than lang yung number of data set natin. So, pagka maramihan na, hindi na quartile ang gagamitin natin. Okay? Ngayon, sa mga na-compute natin, Siyempre, anong ibig sabihin niya? Okay? So, unahin muna natin si Q sub 1. Okay? So, let me reveal. Sabi dito, the interpretation for Q sub 1, 25% of the orders each hour in a day is lower than or equal to 9. What does it mean? Kasi Q sub 1 eh. So, pagka Q sub 1, ang percentage ay... 25%. At ano bang pinag-uusapan natin sa problem? We are talking about the number of hours, the number of orders each hour in a day. So, yun yung subject natin. Tapos, pansinin ninyo. So, di ba katulad ng nabanggit ko kanina doon sa ating diagram ng quartiles. So, coming from the lowest score up to the computed quartile, anong napapansin nyo doon sa data set natin? Ang boundary natin ngayon is the 9. Pansinin nyo yung kasama niya doon sa partition na 5 and 8. Di ba mas mababa siya? Kaya, ang interpretation ay lower than. Ma'am, bakit nagdadagdag ng or equal to? Because there, were, there are times na may mga parehas. Sa pagkakataon lang kasi ngayon, wala tayong common numbers saan. May mga times nga na para ay parehas talaga yan. Kaya naglalagay tayo ng or. Because there is a possibility that it will happen. And then the 9 here is our computed Q sub 1. So that's how you interpret the quartiles. Meron pa siyang ibang klaseng interpretation. Pwede mo rin interpret yung nasa kanan niya. At ilang percent yun. We are talking about here, syempre, ano ka balik ka 25%. On the other side, that is 75%. So 75% of the orders each hour. In a day is, pansin ninyo yung nasa kanan niya, lower than ba? Mas mababa pa rin ba? Of course not. Kasi nasa kanan na siya. So, we will now interpret it as higher than or equal to 9. 
kung makapansin nyo, oh, may 9 din sa kanan niya, di ba, ng 9. So, ibig sabihin, possible nga talaga na may makuha tayong mga equal values. Okay? So, ganun po mag-interpret ng quartiles. Pansin ninyang maigi kung pang ilang quartile ang ating pinag-uusapan. Pagka nasa kaliwa niya, that is always lower than or equal to. Pagka nasa kanan naman niya, higher than or equal to. Okay? I hope that's clear. Now, let's have the interquartile range. Doon sa ating measures of central tendency, meron tayong pinag-uusapan na range na ang common di lang ay highest score minus the lowest score. So, by this case, interquartile range, how spread the scores are within the quartiles. Kaya ang involved dito ay upper quartile, which is Q sub 3, and then the lower quartile, which is Q sub 1. So, get only the difference. So, subtract mo lang. Q sub 3 minus Q sub 1. And take note of this reminder. Pagka we are dealing with statistics, always be careful with the data. Magkamali ka lang ng isa dyan, ng kopya. Magkamali ka lang ng arrangement. It affects everything. So, I hope you should be careful on solving these kind of problems. Okay? So, let us try. Yan yung sinolve natin kanina. So, using the formula for the IQR or the interquartile range, ang nakuha natin Q sub 3 I four I 14 at ang Q sub 1 I 9. Substitute mo lang. The answer there is 5. As simple as that. Okay? I hope everything is clear with everyone. And let's have another example. Given the scores in math quiz 1, 3, 7, 7, 16, 21, 27, 30, and 31, find the three quartiles and the IQR. Okay? And don't forget, let us interpret everything that we solve. So, hindi lang basta nagsosolve. So, as you can notice, yung given natin na data set, I arrange na. So, let's already skip the first step. The arrangement of data set from lowest up to the highest score. Now, right now, we could easily get the quartiles. Unahin muna natin si Q sub 2. Ano ang pinaka nasa gitna? Okay, maraming salamat po. The answer, there is 16. Now, as you can notice here, on the, on the lower half, walang pinaka nasa gitna. So, katulad lang ng tinuro ko sa inyo doon sa median, kunin mo yung dalawang numbers and then divide it by 2. So, yan yung dalawang pinaka nasa gitna, then divide mo by 2, the answer there is 5. So, 3 plus 7 is 10, divided by 2 is 5. So, as simple as that. At ganun din dito sa may kanan. Wala tayong pinaka nasa gitna. So, kunin mo lang yung average nila. So, 27 plus 30. Then, divided by 2, the answer there is 28.5. Okay? So, kung i-interpret natin si Q sub 3, we are talking about here 75%. 75% of the given scores on what subject? So, you need to be specific. In math quiz is, pansinin nyo, mula 1 hanggang dito sa gitna nila. Okay, so that is lower than or equal to 28.5. So that's how you interpret it. Okay, now let's now have the IQR. So IQR again is Q sub 3 minus Q sub 1. So pagka tama ang solve, tama rin na makuha natin sa IQR. Our Q sub 3 is 28.5 and our Q sub 1 is 5. Subtract mo lang. The answer there is 23.5. Okay, so I hope everything is clear with you. Now, let us try the given scenarios. So, hindi lang basta tayo nagsosolve. We also need to analyze these things. So, our first situation analysis is in a 70-item test, Melody got a score of 50, which is the third quartile. Anong ibig sabihin niya? Kunin mo yung mga keywords. The keyword here is the third quartile. Ilang percent pa yun? So, that is 75%. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, kung titignan mo dun sa choices, choices at i-analyze natin, ah, 75% na pinag-uusapan natin. 
Okay, so si Melody daw nag-exam. Nakuha niya yung score ay 50 out of 70. At ang position daw niya sa klase ay nasa third quartile. So, automatically, Melody surpassed 75% of her classmates. Ano ibig sabihin ng surpassed? Mas nataasan niya yung 75% ng kanyang mga kaklase. Okay? Next one. The first quartile of the ages of 250 grade 10 students is 16 years old. What does it imply? Commonly, ang sinasabi sa akin ng mga estudyante dyan ay, so, first quartile, that is... Uh, Q sub 1, which is equivalent with the 25%. So, nagko-conclude agad sila na, ah, yung 25% na yun, 16 years old na. But can you really conclude na lahat sila ay 16 years old? Hindi. Okay. Is that higher than or lower than? So, we are now pertaining to lower. So, pwedeng mas mababa sa 16. So, ang boundary mo lang ay 16 years old. So, 25% of the grade 10 students are 16 years old and below. Okay? Then, the last one, what does it imply if the passing mark is the third quartile in a 100-item test? O, iyan naman, ang pinag-uusapan natin ay sa mismong exam. Makakapasa ka lang daw kung pasok ka sa third quartile. Okay? Anong ibig sabihin po nun? You will pass the test if you got at least 75 correct answers. Okay? Bakit 75 lang nilagay ko dyan? Kasi ang third quartile, ilang percent pa? So, this is 75%. Ano bang 75% ng 100? That is 75. Ma'am, bakit kami at least? Because that is the minimum na requirement for the passing mark. So, pwedeng 75, pwede rin tumaas para masabi na ikaw ay pumasa. So, that is common analysis pagka magsasearch ka ng mga College entrance exams, tapos yan ang kanilang requirement in the entrance exam. Okay, so I hope everything is clear. Thank you so much. I hope you've learned something. To God be all the glory.